Welcome to the Everyday Board Game Podcast with Daniel. And Daniel. And today we are doing another one of our weekly discussion topics where we ask the audience, uh, specifically on Facebook, a discussion topic that we go into detail and then we normally make like a top three of examples of it. Give or Couple take. honorable mentions, shout outs that we want to do. Exactly, yeah. But really the whole goal of this is to have is to learn more about board gaming, whether it's a hypothetical uh, question or whether it's something as simple as this where we want to honor games in a new and unique way. Yeah. Uh, so what we asked today was, what was the best board game Easter eggs that you found? Or whether you haven't found them or not. Uh, is, for those of you who don't know what an Easter egg is, an Easter egg is uh, a little nuance that's put into a game that, that's normally hidden or or hard to see, or it's something that's just not easily, like, super obvious. It's not like yeah. the cover of a game, right? Um, it's why one of my honorable mentions is just a shout-out, because it's yeah. super obvious. Yeah, exactly. My, mine are as well. And and so the idea of an Easter egg is normally it's like, as soon as someone discovers it, they're like, oh, okay. It might be a reference to um, something else in different media. Something it might in be a pop culture. Something in something pop culture, sure. Or gaming related, yeah. Yeah, and so... Apparently, there's a lot more Easter eggs in board games than I realized. I knew there was quite a few, but asking the community, we had 66 comments. Yeah. And uh, I was just able to pick up a few games saying, oh, well, I bet there's something quirky in here, and look at them. And so yeah, exactly. I, I'm, I'm really excited to see what yours are, because I don't, I think, I don't think we're going to have any crossover. I don't think so. There might be one, maybe okay. one. Okay. Then maybe, but I, I doubt it. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, maybe like one of our, um, maybe like one of our uh, honorable mentions or something like that. Yeah. So yeah. Um, with that being said, before we get into it and before we ask the audience and read their comments, Daniel, what have you been playing lately? Oh boy, <laughs> we actually had a really good game day. Our first one in how how long? Oh, quite a while. We were, yeah, we were trying to be lockdown. extra safe, and uh, yeah. yeah, we we all we've all essentially been in quarantine for two weeks to make sure that none of us n none yeah. of us were going to be at risk or anything. But then we had a full day gameathon. <laughs> yeah, I think we started around eleven o'clock and ended about eleven o'clock. So it was about twelve hours. So yep. in total, we played eight games, and then okay. but. So I'm just going to go, I'm not going to say all the games that we played. I'm going to say some of the highlights that I enjoyed. Okay. I did finally get to play a Western Legends game that was more than two people. Uh, didn't yeah. have to use the Man in Black, and I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, it was really good. And probably. I, I was super surprised I, by it. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I liked it. My favorite game, though, we played is uh, nothing against yours and Dom's, but I thoroughly enjoyed the crew i understand why it's uh -huh. so highly rated i had so much fun i love trick thinking games to begin with so much so we played this four times they're quick games but we played this yeah. four times see i during that game day i felt i felt bad for my friend dom uh or for our friend dom because he he kind of got that he got a sense from me that i wasn't enjoying either of the games that he brought to the table which isn't true because i did actually enjoy both of them it's just like after learning six new games, and, and like some of them being <laughs> Stefan Feld, and then playing Res Arcana, which is super icon heavy. I was like, "Oh, hold on, oh, this is hurting." My, yeah, yeah, and I, uh, I still liked one, it. I Res, Res Arcana again. was another one we played. Uh, yeah, enjoyed that one. Uh, what else did we play? There was, we played two Back big ones future. and a small one of mine, huh? We played Back to the Future. Ah, Back to the Future. Yeah, that was the one I was going to uh, talk about. I, yeah. Prospero Hall hit another one out of the ballpark. I yep. really, really enjoyed it. My thing is, as much as I liked it, I don't know if I like it more than Horrified. Yeah, so after that first play, I'm I'm with you on that. I think Horrified yeah. is better. I mean, you could both you could see it in both of our cameras. <laughs> yeah. You know, I I I do quite like it. Um Yeah, but, it's pretty hard to unseat though. I think I think with Horrified, the reason why I like it more, it's not a lot of luck base um, with mm. Back to the Future. It's a lot of dice rolling, which is fine. I don't mind it, but yeah. and it, it makes sense thematically for the game in a sense. You yeah. you have to work with stuff. 
But man, it, you'd be surprised. You think Horrified was a hard game? Then you're going to have a tough time with Back to the Future because Biff is annoying. <laughs> we lost handily. Yeah, it wasn't even close. We got. We didn't get. I think they had negative four love like through most of the game. Yeah, and then and we just, barely the got. The... Kept, everybody was rolling two Biffs every time oh, they rolled man. something. Yeah, it was brutal. It but... was yeah no, but I uh, had a good time with that one. Uh, played a couple felds. I, I actually still say I think I like Yorvik better than Amerigo. I, I didn't hate Amerigo. I just liked how different Yorvik felt. Yeah. Oh yeah, that auction was just phenomenal. Yeah. Like there was something very specific. Like every time that we that we set down cards for a round, it's like mm, I I don't want to go first, but and, I'll put and it then, here. And it's not just that not having to go first, but like. <clears throat> well, crap! I'm gonna have to play hateful. I don't need the card, but I can't. I can't. I can't let Dom get this, or else he's gonna get 14 points at the end of the game. Right? Yeah, exactly. It's oh, yeah. I mean, like hate hate bidding. I guess is what it is. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, what else did we play? Um, the other one from Dom. I... No, we played the two from Dom was Res Arcana and Marvel's Champion. Oh, Marvel's I did enjoy Champion. Marvel's Champion. Uh, um. Yeah. I don't know if I'll get into it like he is. Just for the simple fact, as much as I like Marvel, I like the Arkham Horror LCG more because it's uh, got a campaign to it. I know they're going to add a campaign later, but yeah. Yeah, see, I, I don't care about superheroes. So the game itself was fine. Uh, yeah. Anybody who's a superhero fan, definitely go do that. De it, it's yeah, very similar it. it's to, really like, it, it's a much clean... Like, I want to compare it to Sentinels of the Multiverse... Where it's basically... Uh, I've never played Sentinels, so... I think Sentinels is cleaner, personally. It's a little more random, but, like, it's 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 cleaner. Like, mm. because there's a lot of extra phases, and, like, you do and don't get penalties based on the Marvel Champions and stuff. Um, yeah. It was okay. I mean, I didn't hate it. I, um, I just don't care about superheroes, and that wasn't enough of a push for me to go play, so, as, play superhero games. We played Amerigo and your Victor yours. What was the other one we played? Um, the last one we played of mine was, uh, ooh, it, it was right at the end there. Yeah. Oh, uh, Costa Rica. Costa actually, Rica. I actually enjoyed that one. That yeah. was actually quite fun. Matthew Dunstan. Awesome yeah. game. Oh, I could have just looked at my shelf. That's right. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, back we, up. we got a good, a good gaming down. It was, it was much needed. Um, but we also have to be careful about how we do this. If we're going to do it again, mm -hmm. um, I know I'm thinking about doing it like a once a month kind of thing where we yeah. just have a nice group, get together, middle of the month, play, and then that still gives us enough time to isolate as well. Right. Yeah. Because that, that was the first game day that we've had since, since March. Since March. Early yeah. March. I think the first week of March before lockdown started was the last time we had a game night and it was just us three. Yeah. I think so. Wow. Have you been playing any other games other than those? Uh, I did play Keyforge uh, with the wife on Sunday since we got a bunch of new decks, and right now it's one and one. She beat me the first game we played. I just beat her on the second game to play. So we'll see what happens when we play a third game. Yeah, but I did get to start uh, use some of our new factions that we picked up, and I have to say, uh, the faction that I played had Untamed, Saurian, uh, and I don't even remember what the third. Oh, Dis. It was Dis, and that the the Saurian and the Untamed worked so well together because like some of them would allow me to ward and then I had a Saurian in there that made for uh, the forges cheaper so yep. it was five instead of and it just compounded and I was there was a an untamed that would uh, allow it when it came to play it can go anywhere in the battle line mm -hmm. and then I can reap with its neighbor so I automatically just reaped and got two uh, two am or whatever it's called amber there yeah yeah that that's a that's a great little combo yeah so that's it was like cool. boom 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 and then Oh, I only need five at the start of my turn. I put up my third forge. I'm glad I got you addicted to it. <laughs> I enjoy it. Um, I, like I said, I didn't have a problem with Magic the Gathering, other than how expensive it was to be yes. competitive in it and stuff like that. Yep. But I had a problem with the community of Magic the Gathering more yes. than I did the game itself. Right. And that's, yep, that's the reason I got out of Magic. I played in tournaments until probably 15 years ago. I've been clean since... Since like 2006. <laughs> no, 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 no. You haven't been clean. Uh, Magic the Gathering was the gateway drug to behind you. Yes. 
I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have a lot of board <laughs> games. Uh, yeah, no, I, yeah, that, that game day was definitely well needed. I'm glad we were able to play that. Um, man, we lost yeah. horribly on Back to the Future, but that's okay. Um, but that's all right, though. I hey, played... no, we, we did well for the DeLorean part of it. We just couldn't make the parents fall in love. We got the DeLorean right. all the parts, and it was we one space away. We completely neglected it. We completely neglected them. That's what happened. No, uh, no, is that when we tried to work with them, Biff came and ruined everything. That's true. Well, yeah, we, we probably we probably should have balanced that a little better, though. Like, going back, it, it's good to have that, re like, now a game that's has enough depth where you can go back and... In retrospect, well, we probably should have done this. Where yeah, yeah. should have done that. Yeah, no, I don't disagree. Cool. I I have been playing a couple other games. I recently got uh, a few games. I played Rock Paper Wizard with my son, and and my daughter. And that's a silly game where you where you're just trying to get to and from being close to the the gold pit and and far away from the entrance. And each turn you have a certain number of, of spells that everybody can cast. And you count uh, Rock, Paper, Wizard. And on Wizard, you point at one of the other people and you cast the spell. So this is the Burning Hand spell. And each of them have a different effect. Like some, like there's a counter spell where you cancel the other player's uh, ability. Um, there's yeah. one where, like the Burning Hand, you push them back and then you steal a gold from them. And then, but what happens is there's a, the, the cards make a train, so every turn, or after every round, the last one dumps off and then a new one comes in. And so okay. that, that ever-changing uh, set of different problems, that it, it makes it really interesting. It was, it was funner than I thought. It's kind of like a, a silly version of um, Cash and Guns, in which Cash and Guns is already a silly version of Cash and Guns. But you know what I mean. It's, it's just overall silly. And then, yeah. yesterday, because we're in lockdown, we decided to play Pandemic, the new one, Hot Zone North America, which is a yeah. little too real, but we won. And what this does differently, uh, so it's a smaller board, you don't have um, research stations that you build, it's only in Atlanta, that's it. Um, the CDC. Yeah, the CDC, exactly. And it's small enough where you can move, you could probably get to the CDC in most, most turns. Um, however, in this one, you only have three diseases. There's only, I think, 12 cubes of each color, so it's really small. And you only have three epidemics. But, uh, there's crisis cards that you add to change difficulty. There's like seven crisis cards. You shuffle them up, add either one per epidemic or two per ah. epidemic for difficult mode. We played standard and played one. And so one of them, for example, uh, you take the bottom card out of the of the bottom infection card out of the game, but you also remove three cubes of that color from the game. Okay. From so it makes it that's that cannot be contained nearly as quickly. Um, one of them, it said, do the infection uh, when you're flipping infection cards, do it twice this turn. Oh my God. <laughs> it's just it was, it was brutal. And but it was really Sounds fun. Like it. Yeah, it's it small little profile. Only only takes up a little bit of room. Not big components. Twenty dollar entry. It's awesome. Yeah. No. It, to, to me, it sounds like a, a streamlined version yep. of Pandemic. Com like I'll uh, Ticket to Ride New York or London to yes. the actual big game of Ticket to Ride. Right. Exactly. That that's how it feels. Um, <sighs> what makes it interesting? I guess they used to have the. They made their own version of it. At, that was how they would do it as demos at the shop or at like shops and conventions and stuff instead of doing a whole game they just do like this 20 minute demo and you can play effectively the whole thing so basically they just started selling their demo copy is what they apparently did apparently it was it was popular <laughs> enough yeah and since this is north america i can i mean maybe six more on the way I doubt Antarctica. Well, it's pandemic. I'm not going to be surprised if they don't come up with new ones. I mean, you yeah. got you got the Fall of Rome, which is a historical. It doesn't have anything to do with pandemic on this on that one. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, you have Cthulhu. It has nothing to do with pandemic. It's just nope. a brand name now. It's kind of like uh, Monopoly rethemed it with Fallout. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. I I can totally see that. I was watching a YouTube channel that I'm a fan of recently. 
and he, this guy, he, he doesn't do anything board games, just like media and business and like, and top tens he'll do, like stuff like that. And he's, he went on a rant and he started talking about how he played, how he's like sick of like bad board games. He was like, yeah, me and my family play board games. Pandemic is like one of my favorite games of all time. And then I was like, wait a minute, hold on. I already like this YouTube channel, but go on. <laughs> you know, it, it was yeah. it was good to see that it's it's infiltrated, and he lives in I think the Czech Republic, so it's like okay. it, it's not just like a regional thing either. So I'm yeah. I'm curious to see if they make a Europe version, if they make an oh, Asia more version. Than likely, um, mm -hmm. I mean, I think a big part of it too is why they went with North America. Mm -hmm. Is it because a lot of the pandemics themselves that they've made deal more with like European stuff, right? The, the Rising Tides, I think, had something to do with, like, in there. The Iberian Peninsula was another one mm -hmm. that was uh, based off the Iberian Peninsula. So, yeah, I'm not surprised. Yep. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Um, oh, no, it's that one. There we go. Yeah, I was thinking uh, my favorite uh, of all the offshoots, I think it has to be the Kane Klinko one. Oh, yeah, the rapid response, huh? Yeah, that was actually quite fun. Yeah, yeah, I like that so, one a lot, too. Quick question for you. Yes. What was your favorite game out of all the things we've played on Saturday? What was your favorite one? What's the one that stood out for you? Let me look at the list. But... you want to take a guess? Out of everything we played outside the fellows, I'm going to say Western Legends probably stood out to you, or the crew. Amerigo. Amerigo! <laughs> But Western Legends was number two, for sure. Yeah. Um, I was super happy with that. Um, I liked Jorvik and Costa Rica a lot. Those were probably back-to-back. -back. Yeah. Um, then probably Back to the Future, then Res Arcana, then The Crew, and then Marvel Champions. Wow, The Crew is at the bottom of your list. I mean, it, it's good, but it's a trick-taking game, and... I, I think, like trick-taking games. Mind you, we only played the four, first four scenario. I right. think it would get more complicated and might leave a more lasting impression. Yes. But for me, as much as I like the crew, I have to say playing Western Legends with a better, a, a more party. Right. To the point where when we were uh, going at it and like trying to give it like a critical eye and stuff like that, our biggest nitpick was that the fact the minis didn't really do anything. <laughs> yeah, the minis that. weren't That was weren't our biggest the nitpick of the yeah. entire game. It really was, yeah. I mean... Uh, I mean, there there's some random in it, sure, you know, but it's... But if it's thematically for yeah, that, I it mean... Does. It uh, does. Your best chance to get the best legendary points in this game is playing poker, because you're going to be able to get win a lot of money, and yep. that's very luck-based, but again, you're playing poker. And then the other one is mining for gold, that's rolling the dice. But, I mean, when you're mining for gold, you're, you're running a risk right. of getting fool's gold or just nothing. Yep. So... No, it was it was it was fun thematic. It was I didn't feel at any point that either of us had an unreasonable advantage over anybody else. I mean, our friend Dom, like halfway through he, the game, he, he got, got his a first slow point start. and he won. Yeah. <laughs> so you and me were almost in the double digits, and Dom was still sitting at zero, and yeah. he beat us by seven, eight points. Right. Yeah. It was it was impressive. No, I liked it a lot. I I was. It's on my radar that if I see it for sale, uh, I there's a good chance I'll buy it. I liked it a lot. Yeah. No, I don't disagree. It was uh, it probably my standout one, um, even though I played it before. Yeah. Going from the two player version with playing with the man and black card to actually playing the full how the game is supposed to be played. Yeah. Ah, uh, and I, I really want to add those legendary tokens in there to see how it changes up the game a little bit. Was that your favorite too, Western Legends? Yeah, I, th I would have to say Western Legends is probably my favorite. I did also enjoy Amerigo. I think I like again. I think I like Jorvik more than Amerigo, because Amerigo, like Dom was saying, is basically a field game. You got to concentrate on making good yeah. stuff. Like Jorvik was so different that yeah. I was looking at him like this is a field game. <laughs> yeah, it's so. It's... I, th I think that's why it stood out to me more. It was yeah. so different than what you're used to with Feld. Right. Where I wanted, I, that's why I brought both of them, is because I know I wanted a, a classic Feld feel. And I really like the way that the Cube Tower, you know, gives everybody the same selection of actions, and but differing quantity. It it was a super smart game, and yeah. I 
I liked it a lot. Like I love, I love the ability no, no, I, to combo. I enjoyed it, except for that end it. where the freaking pirates weren't, or the the cannons were not coming out. Yeah. So our first game we had, or the first <laughs> round we had, like what all seven eventually show up, mm -hmm. but afterwards five. That's all that ever showed up. Two yep. got stuck somewhere in that tower and never came out the entire game. Yep. It made a dynamic though. Like it was every turn was just like chuck some cubes. Ah. Oh! I need those because, especially yeah. for me, I was set up for cannons. I just needed one more cube to fall, and I'd be set. Yep. Yeah, you barely missed it out. It was oof. Yeah. It was so good no, fun. I had a good time. I did enjoy it. Um, I probably the one that probably was my le not least favorite, but one that hit the lowest for me, and I think that was Res Arcana because I did like the game. Don't get me wrong; it was a fun game. Yeah. My only issue with it is the iconography was so hard to grasp right. at the very beginning, especially for your first time. Once I figured out how my engine was working, I got it going, but it took forever. What does this mean? What is that? Okay, what is going on here? Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, I I think I'm the same way. Like, it it, it you picked it up a lot quicker than I did. Um, I think I was just, like, in, like, just completely distracted mode because I had so many games that, that went through. Um, but, yeah, yeah I, I think, mean... No, Res Arcana was our third game. No, it was much later. Oh no no no! It was our. It was, it was Dom's game. second game. Yeah. Yeah. So because, so, the way we were doing it is like I would get a game off of mine, you would get a game off of yours, yeah. and then Dom would get one of his. Then, the only reason we couldn't get one more of Dom's is just because it was eleven o'clock at night, and your your wife was wanting you to go home, and yeah. my wife was just like, I don't care, you leave me alone, go play your games. Which is hilarious, but she she also did put the curfew on you as well. She was like, "Yeah, hey, yeah." As soon as I go to bed, they're out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> before I go to bed, they're out. It's like, all right, well, yeah. that's that's fair. All right, well, shall we jump into this then? Yes, uh, you want to start with the audience. Yeah, so we asked our audience, "What are the best board game Easter eggs that you found, or that you've seen, or heard of, or whatever?" And uh, once again, Easter eggs are like little hidden nuances um, um some of them for reference for people historically easter eggs came in uh through the movies like dvds they would leave little easter eggs on the mm -hmm. dvds and stuff like that yep. uh, a lot of times you would see a lot of directors harken back to some of the earlier films by putting little this and that in there so uh, yeah uh, perfect best, example best movie easter egg that i can think of is uh george lucas and indiana jones on the one of the hieroglyphs, it has C three PO and R two D two on. The the best example I can think of is like any Pixar movie always has a one one three and at least somewhere, somewhere in the movie. Not only that, hidden. they always have a Pizza Planet truck. And they also have a Pizza Planet truck from Toy Story, exactly. Yeah. And there's a Pizza Planet truck in my Toy Story board game. So is that any? No, it's a card. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> now, if it was hidden somewhere in the box, like. Like under like a container or something, then that would be funny. Well, yeah, Pixar is a good uh, analogy here because they're the masters of Easter eggs. Yes. The little Pixar lamp is in all their movies. You just yep. have to find the it. The lamp. The little red or the yellow oh, the ball, ball with the blue stripe and the red star is in all their movies. You yep. just have to find it. The A one 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 three, which harkens back to a classroom a lot of them were in yep. back in the day. So yeah, no, perfect example. Yeah, exactly. Uh, another example. Let's see here. Um, Oh, uh, in in one of the more recent uh, Star Tro or Star Wars movies, the Daniel Craig played one of the Star Troopers, yeah. and they didn't give him credit in the credits, but they did title the Star Trooper JB zero zero seven, which is so, awesome. <laughs> yeah, so just a a funny little Easter egg here. You know who directed uh, Star Wars, right? The the new re the new ones. Um, the first one, uh, Force Awakens. Wasn't it? Uh, 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 I can't remember his name. Uh, J.J. Abrams. Yeah, J.J. Abrams. Yeah, exactly. He also directed the new reboot Star Trek movies. Right. So, in a little Easter egg in Star Trek movies, he had R two uh, D two, and when the one of That's the ships cool. explodes, he's getting sucked out into space. Just a little Easter egg there. But harken that back. He loved working with Simon Pegg on Star Trek. Yeah. That he specifically made a role for Simon Pegg, but he hid who he was in the movie. So that, that junk collector that you see in the very beginning of Force Awakens, that's Simon Pegg in full makeup. Is it really? That's cool. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. No, he, 
I, I heard, uh, I watched the whole thing about Simon Pegg talking about how J.J. just approached him. I guess he liked his, his movie Hot Fuzz and mm-hmm. uh, Zombieland so much that he was like, hey, do you want to be Zombieland, in Star Trek? Uh, All right, uh, not Zombieland, Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead, right. He liked him so much that he was like, hey, do you want to be in Star Trek? He's like, I'm not a serious actor. Why? Like, why? <laughs> what? <laughs> but he was like, yeah, sure, yeah. of course. All right, anyway, that went off rails, but we I love Easter eggs. I've... I've so do I. Uh, looked into Easter eggs for years, and it's not—it's not just movies that do it. Video games do it, and board games do it too. Yep. The only thing for me, it was harder to find because it's not something I actively seek out in video or board games. I see it in video games all the time, yep. so I'm used to it. Yeah, I, you know, I've recently found um, Easter eggs in music a lot, which is interesting, and some of the yeah. weirder ones. Yeah, it, it's it's not very common, but there's an artist I listen to called Aphex Twin. And he makes some pretty strange music, but if you take there's two of his I songs. I listen to your music. Yeah, no, I understand why you like him. Yeah, um, <laughs> but he he's weird. He's a weird musician, but he's incredibly talented. There is two of his songs. Um, one is just they call it equation because it's like this long mathematical equation, um, or formula. Either one you want to call it. And one is called window liquor. And both of them have. Uh, if you run it through a spectral analysis machine and shows you like the spectrum, like uh, uh, analysis, like a visual display of the audio, he hides okay. images in the song. And so you can hear it like make frequencies and stuff. But then when you actually see the, see the image of what it looks like in a spectral analysis machine, that's what it shows, uh, which is weird, right. <laughs> which is bizarre. <laughs> So let's go into board games because now we're we're, we're crazy getting off on topic. so many tangents. It's not even fun. That's how much we like Easter eggs. That's that's we how like much we like about them everywhere. Exactly. And so when we found these, they're really cool. So we have a couple honorable mentions and uh and uh of course our top three. But we're gonna ask the audience first. Uh, yep. Preston said, "Aren't there a bunch on the Seventh Continent map cards?" And so I have not played Seventh Continent. Nor have I. Nor have I. Um. Richard I'm going to go for like a massive Kickstarter. I'll stick with Gloomhaven over there. I can't afford like Seventh Continent and Tainted Grill or whatever that yeah. new one is. And yeah, all of the all of the above, right? Yeah. yeah. I so press. Uh, Richard replied that he's only played a little bit, but he'll keep an eye out. Um, yeah. I haven't heard anything about it, but I'm sure if if someone's heard something about it, there's probably references to it. Oh, yeah. In a game like that, um, that's super campaign driven, and with the map cards coming out, I bet yeah. there is too. There probably is, honestly. There, there, I know there's Easter eggs in Gloomhaven. I just haven't sure. really looked for them. Yeah. Uh, my but big part of it too is I don't want to be spoiled on anything, so I'm right. going through the campaign. So I just got to be careful with how I uh, adjust it. But I, it's I, there's got to be. There's probably a little Easter egg to one, some of his previous games. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. Adrian said, Tricarian's board is a Where's Waldo with all the magicians that you play as hidden in it, as well as other interesting game elements. You know, uh, I wonder, so I have Tricarian over here. Do you mind if I go get it off my shelf and let's look at the board? Because now I don't, re- I remember there was a lot of detail on the board, but it's been years since I've played it. So let's take a look. Feel free to fill in the time right now on. So lovely, cool. lovely, lovely. I'm just looking through. So I'm going to go ahead and we. I'm going to make a decision. Let's skip. We're skipping the uh, next one, right? Uh, guys, just because of possibility of spoilers for people who haven't played the game right. yet. Right. Now, I, actually, I do want to. I do want to bring up one of them. One of these magicians right here is actually a, a magician. I don't remember his name off the top of my head, but he is a famous magician. And, uh,. A pretty good one at that, too. I remember I noticed the similarity back in the day. Alright, so here we go. Here we have the board. Um, okay, alright. I'm starting to see some stuff. This is a big board, so I will get as much of it... I, I will get some panels onto the screen as best as I can. But, uh, here's some of it. I see, like, a whole bunch of... Like, right here, you can see, like, there's performers all over the the streets and whatnot yeah yeah there's quite a few uh, yeah that, bi- that board is so busy it's busy it's a pretty heavy euro game honestly but it's it's really solid um yeah i mean there's so much going on in the background of this 
that you can't help but notice that there, yeah, there's there's definitely Easter eggs on this. I mean, just looking around, when it's not your turn, this helps fix analysis paralysis. Because you could just look around on the board and uh, <laughs> just kind of hang out. You know? It doesn't fix analysis paralysis. It might cause it more because people aren't paying attention to what's going on because they're looking at the board. Right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it. I can't help but look at... Oh, there we go. Okay, that's a phenomenal reference. Right here. If you look, there's somebody who's awfully familiar hanging... I'll see if I can get that on the screen. Hanging... Yeah, you're not doing a good up, job. Yeah, hanging upside down. From, what the from are his, you looking at? There's so much going on that board, I can't find where you're looking at. Right there. Oh, okay, I see it now. Looks awfully familiar, doesn't he? Yeah, it does. Yeah, that's that would be the Harry Houdini reference. And, you know, so, so there, are, there are the magicians in here that are the Harry Houdini characters as well, but that's uh, that shouts out to them. Which magician was that that's on the cover? I forget. One second. For our audio viewers, he's pointing out some Easter eggs on the, the board that he's showing to the camera. If you ever want to see us do these live on Twitch, you can join us on everyday or twitch.tv everyday board games. Right. I need to figure uh, out if, which if ones that, these are. If you can't join us live, you want to see the re-upload of what he's talking about, they will go up on YouTube as well at Everyday Board Games 2020. Space between Everyday Board Games and 2020. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, now I'm stressing because I want to know, because they even said who the... All right. Then who let's the not worry is. about it. Let's right. move on. You're slowing us down. I am. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I do agree we'll skip guys' comment. Uh, not the first not because we... Not because we don't want to acknowledge him, but Guy pointed out uh, some that may be a spoiler in one For of those the... those who haven't played the game, yeah. Those who haven't played the game, but it, it's specifically about time stories. Yes, but so. his next one, you can go ahead and read. Okay. Guy's next comment uh, said, In my first Castle Panic, there is a gnome on the cover that is not part of the game, but can be found hidden behind a tree a tree on the game board. Really? Uh, right behind, underneath the shiny. There it is. Let's take a look. Well, while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and read Ryan's. Belfort's board. FTW. So, uh, and I'm going to just keep going while you're looking for it as well. Uh, Glenn Davis, this is a big one because this is true. Um, I didn't think of it because I don't own the game. Uh, I do want to. And that is Scythe. The game board has a heap of Easter eggs on it. You'll see Thor, Alien, Predator, Santa Claus, just to name a few that's on the board in the little uh, pieces. And apparently, you'll see later on down the line, the modular board puts even more. Yeah. Okay, so here's my copy of My First Castle Panic. Which one is the gnome? It's uh, usually a guy with a pointy hat. I don't immediately see it, but... Hold on, well, you moved so quickly I couldn't take a look at the board. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I know I went quick. Because I don't see a gnome. I see a troll. I see the three characters. Maybe that's it? Or she's the gnome? But Maybe move over a little? How about the sides? The sides? Oh! You know what? There's there the gnome behind There's the, the tree. Alright. Um, I didn't realize it was on the side of the cover. And you know what? Sure enough. Let's take a look. Do you see it? There's the gnome there behind the is. tree. Hiding behind the tree. Cool. I didn't realize that at all. That's really neat. I like that a lot. So you want to read Brendan's? I sure will once I put this back. There we go. Um, Brendan. Uh, dead panic or dead panda packed on one of the camels in Jaipur due to losing to the spiel of Takenoko that year. Uh, there is a clarification I do about later. this Easter egg. Yeah. Um, so, I'm going to say it. This is my number three. This was my number three. <laughs> and so, because I want to bring up the story. And I brought out my original printing of Jaipur uh, from Gameworks. There is a newer printing. It does not have this. So, I wanted to find out about and this. And the, the newer printing is from Space, Space Cowboys. Cowboys, right? Yep. So, the Here's how all the camels look. Now, apparently what happened, I'm going to rewind back to 2007. Sebastian Pauchan, who is the designer of this, um, he made a game called Istaban, 
where you are racing camel or you have camels, but you're basically populating different towns. Thing. I was watching this right before the podcast because I wanted to learn about this. And okay. that was nominated for the Spiel de Jar that year. That same year in 2007, it lost to what what he considered a very close race to Zularetto, which if you're familiar with Zularetto, has a massive panda on the front of it. Well, yeah. he gave a little wink to it on this because there are camels in the Istaban game. There's a little camel pelt being uh, smuggled. Mean, uh, panda pelt. Or panda pelt being smuggled underneath one of the cards. This was my number three because this was one of the first that I've noticed as well. And what <laughs> I found interesting with it is that there are some people who have made little variant rules for the panda. For example, if you have a panda at the end and you have a tie for camels, this is the tiebreaker. That's or, actually not a bad variant. That's not bad. Or the other kinda, option that I, I saw... It doesn't work anymore with the new... No, it doesn't work anymore with that. But I heard one where a guy said, oh, well, if you have this this camel, you can discard it and steal a card from an opponent's hand, which is the only time that you have direct interaction. Um, I could take it either way, but... Uh, to me, that kind of defeats the purpose of the game. Yeah. I, I just find it funny that he was like, oh, well, I lost the, the spiel to you. I'm going to kill your animal and put it in my game? Like, what in the world? Like, what kind of anger do you have to have to, to put that in? So that was my All number right. three. Uh, so Michael says, this count Tiny Towns Friendly Local Game Store promo card. He actually puts up a little picture. Yeah, I'll see if I can get a, up, just get it to, for people to see. Yep. Yeah, the game within a game. You see the, yeah. the kid buying a copy of Tiny Towns. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's been a lot of friendly local game stores as promos for a lot of cards. Um, yeah. We're gonna we'll probably talk about it more, but there's a lot of game within <clears throat> game references that yes. we found. So we'll talk about those I, more. I'll, I'm not gonna lie, I don't have that exactly on my list there is one that i'll talk about um later on that yeah. is on my list but yeah and so, we'll bring up references as as they make they sense. come along so i'm not gonna lie marcos is one of the honorable mentions that i was yep. going to talk about and that of course is captain america shield on the board of rampage and it's not yes. just captain america shield so yeah. in one of the buildings you have captain america shield and mind you this is one of the reasons why it's called terror in meeple city now first off the name was bad but all the Easter eggs that can lead to lawsuits on this one. Uh, so you have the Captain America shield on one of the buildings. You have the bat signal on one of the roofs of the buildings. You have the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles peeking out of the the sewers uh, there. Yeah. So there's quite a bit of references in this game that could, you know, get in a little bit of trouble. Yeah. I'm going to, I'll do what I can to show them as best I can. There's the Captain America shield. Yep. Um, you're right. There's there's a little tiny blue dinosaur on there. There's a lot of hidden stuff. Who is the yeah, artist that, behind this one? I forget. And who, uh, who again, did the Stewart art. was adding the bat signal on one of the rooftops. Yeah. So you have the Captain America shield. You have the bat symbol. You have the Ninja Turtles. Mm -hmm. You have IDW, DC, and Marvel Comics all on right. one board. Yeah. I mean, it, and they're all nods. They're all in respect, right? Um, yeah. But you're right. I mean, there is, there's enough of those references where you could just sit for hours looking through it and and noticing. Oh, yep. There's another one. There's the hoverboard from Back to the Future. Future. Yep. Yeah. Um. I mean, yeah. There's there's countless. I I'm not finding the Ninja Turtles mm -hmm. one, but I know I've seen that coming from the man. Uh, Ninja Turtles is on the the main board. It's in the. I think towards the center of it, and they're coming out of a manhole cover. Oh, yeah. Yep, there they are. So, yeah, this, there is quite the references in this. Yeah. And again, we're sorry for our audio listeners that this is becoming very visually heavy and slowing the podcast down. Right. But it, it's worth it, though. I mean, this is a, a fun, enjoyable thing, uh, but... Yeah, we sorry, audio listeners. Um, Killer Bunnies, uh, John says, is chock full of Easter eggs and punny references. No, thank you. I, I played Killer Bunnies. It's okay. Uh, Edward Carter adds, Clink in Space definitely pokes fun at every science fiction movie it can. 
I haven't played the in space version. I've only ever played Clank, so. Yeah, I I've only done that as well. Um, Greenbrier Games has crossover characters in their games. Zpocalypse, which I just received yesterday, has some YouTubers as survivor characters. And that's <laughs> a common thing too, of like the people's yeah. faces, the characters. And a lot of it that has to do in, um, in, with, uh, with the exception of one of the games that I'm going to talk about is promos. A lot of them are like promos to help with said uh, company's Kickstarter or right. other stuff like that. Yep. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, one of my favorite uh, Easter eggs that I just thought of in my head, and it was a promo card, so is um, Dead of Winter. Yep. You can get the Felicia Day card in Dead of Winter, and there is also a uh, Rodney Smith uh, promo mm -hmm. card for Dead of Winter. Yep. Sure can. And, and then I, we... I'll, I'll say this right now. If you ever need to learn a game to play and you don't have someone like Danny who can learn it in 30 minutes... Watch the uh, Rodney Smith. Watch it played. Uh, right. If he's got the game, it's probably one of the best people to learn from. As much as I like Rado, don't learn it from Rado. I, I, that's where I learn it from mostly. Rado does a good job. But I also have his kind of mindset when I'm learning games. Like, oh, let's look over here. Hey, let's look over here. Yeah. I love it. Um, what did Blair say? Blair said, message from Minks in Boo and Betrayal at Baldur's Gate. Oh, yeah. Boo is one of the Baldur's Gate characters. The, yeah. And so they're in... Uh, uh, Betrayal at Baldur's Gate. Yeah, which man. is a reprint of Betrayal at the House on the Hill. Yep. Yeah, so a message from Minx and Boo. That's cool. I didn't know that. I do have so, Betrayal at Baldur's Gate. Sarah, I'm not going to go into de too much of a depth of because... Eh. It may or may not come up on our lists. <laughs> uh, but Sarah did say any Stonemaier or Rosenberg games. And I, I'll i talk more about those later because... Yes, yes, same. Hmm. Yeah. Huh. All right. So, uh, Devin said Wingspan because those eggs look exactly like Cadbury Easter eggs. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, they do. <laughs> they, they, to me, they look more like uh, the Whopper eggs that you would get yep. around Easter. Yeah, uh, the, the chocolate coated thing. Old ones, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I love that. I knew somebody was... I was just waiting for somebody to reference it. Or, like, the Easter promo box that... that uh, The ones who did the East, uh, the promo advent calendars. Like, yeah, yeah, the same yeah. thing they did in Easter one. I was like, I'm just waiting for someone to say it. Uh, and then both uh, Devin and Peter agreed with him. Yeah. Ha Haley says, in Everdell's Pearl Book expansion, there's a crab called Bosley the Artist. The artist for Everdell is Andrew Bosley. Yeah, uh, I have not seen that. I've not played the Pearl Brook expansion yet. I mm -hmm. wanted to get myself familiar with the base game because that's how I'm going to teach it to people first out because the yep. base game is so simple. But yeah, I have not seen it, but that's kind of cool. Uh, case in, uh, also kind of cool is Andrew Bosley also did the art for Tapestry. Yep. So Michael says, I like a bunch of the stretch goal survivors for Zombie Side, Black Plague, Green Horde, and Evader. Some pretty entertaining an uh, analogies of many movie and TV show characters. And yeah. that's uh, one of my shout outs that I was going to talk about was exactly that. The and reason why it's an Ottawa mention slash shout out, they're not really Easter eggs. They're created characters that you can only get in the Kickstarter version. Right. Yeah. So you'll have. Uh, uh, just case in point, I'm thinking of I think it was Zombie Side or one of them. They have the kids from Stranger Things on there. Mm -hmm. um, in Zombie Side Black Plague, they have a Batman style character. Yeah. So yeah, it's it, not really an Easter egg because they're going out of their way to reference these things in their own slight way and be yeah. playable characters. It's not something that's just kind of popped in there. Right. It's like the Rado promo for Village Villages of Valeria. You know, yeah, it's, it, and it, uh, Rodney Smith, as I was talking about, for what, uh, right. Dead of Winter. Um, let me ask you a quick question. Uh, I want to make another reference of it, but I want to know, it might be on your list, but there was a game that you, me, and my son played a couple weeks ago. You know which game I'm talking about. Is that okay. on your list? No, it is not. Okay, then I'm going to bring it up. Um, Pioneer Days has an example of that, where Brett Gilbert, a designer of it, is uh, one yeah. of the cards. So, oh, yeah, another one that didn't make my list, but we could talk about too, is um, the guy who does, uh, what is Looney Labs guy? He puts himself in a lot of games. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Andrew Looney. He draws himself yeah. in a lot of games. Sure. And his wife. And his wife. Uh, Jesse 
said the original printing of Jaipur, what we are talking about, but then clarified that it was Zularetto, not Takenoko, which is true. It, it was Zularetto because of the cover. I could pull it out, but I'm not going to right now. Just check the board game deep cover. Yeah. So, uh, Gabby said, Exhibit from Pit My Ride, Darwin from Sequest, which I believe is the dolphin, and Marvin, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which we were just talking about not too long ago, mm -hmm. are all in underwater cities, apparently. Now, I didn't know that. That's interesting. No, no, did I. That's very cool. Um, Muhammad said, The Guest from the Grand Austria Hotel, which I looked into. I was curious about that, and like, I saw somebody do it. The The guy who's on the cover of, like, Fields of uh, Isle of Sky, the yeah. the one who's um, Scottish and wears plaid and whatnot, he's one of the guests in Grand Austrian Hotel. In fact, quite a few of them are characters from other Mayfair and Lookout games and all those others that are ah. in there. Yeah, so that's a really good one. The Grand Austrian Hotel is full of those. Rafal? The one I know that uh, I've learned recently is Presence of the Groak from Moomins on Scythe's board. Yeah. Uh, the Scythe mobile board, I there was a YouTube video that Modular. I found. Modular board, yeah. Um, if you look into it, there's a guy who made a whole video of, like, the C3PO. There's Santa. Yeah, no. Like, all uh, sorts I've of crazy ones. I've looked at both boards because um, I don't know if... Our mutual friend Bryce has the modular board. I know he's got the play map, but if you look just the baseboard, there's a yeah. lot of Easter eggs in it. But uh, from what videos I've seen of the modular board, it's just so much more. It's full, yeah. Yeah. There is so many good ones. Um, let's see here. Where are we at? Kim. Oh, no, Kim. Uh, Danielle. Danielle. Sorry. Yeah, Danielle said, like every card in Smash Up, I'm particularly a fan of the frying pan in the Princess deck in Pretty Pretty Smash Up. Um, you have Smash Up. Oh, yeah. And I, I purposely didn't put this on the list because I didn't want to dig through all the cards and find all the, the Easter eggs in it. But There's there so is chock full of a little bit of Easter eggs in uh, Smash Up. Yeah. Just from, like, the Cowboys and the Mummies. and uh, my, my favorite thing about Smash Up is, Easter egg-wise, is the way the mechanism uh, for that deck work with the group like the mummies you bury things for points later or you can use later so the mummies are buried whereas the cowboys enter a duel and stuff like that so i like how they always do the mechanisms yeah cool so uh kim said in zombie side room morgue uh there's a room where a game of zombie side was happening probably before they all got attacked by zombies and again that goes along with what we've been saying is a lot of games tend to put other games in there Right, exactly. Especially if they're all from the same company or the same design. Yeah, or even the same artists. Certain artists I found are, which I'll be talking about more, there's there's some of the artists that really kind of go out of their way, like that's their style. And mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to be bringing them up here in a minute. Um, where are we at? Kim. Uh, Kristen said, the actual Oh My Goods Easter Egg Special Edition, uh, which is what I was talking about, Box is literally an Easter egg. <laughs> Showing everybody the picture yeah, of it. Move it over to the right a little bit. Uh, oh, the other way. One. Yep. A uh, little bit. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I'm having to look at the second screen. I'm waiting on the delay. Yeah, literally an Easter egg. It's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, Matthew says, A wonderful world made cards with Easter eggs to other tabletop games. There are cards for Welcome to, Great Western Trail, and Res Arcana, if I'm not mistaken, and a few other games I cannot completely remember. Very cool. You want to read Rodrigo's while I pull this out? Yep. Rodrigo said, Cartographers insert text and under it. So, there is something on the insert of Cartographers, apparently, and underneath it. Uh, there was another one that we'll probably be bringing up later. Uh, Honestly, I'm not seeing anything in this one. You, you've taken out the insert? Yep, I am looking at the insert. There's nothing in the box, and the insert's quite blank. Hmm. Weird. That says cartographers insert text and under it. Uh, nothing on the front of the insert, too. Uh, let's see here. Oh, it's just a yeah. blank insert, huh? Yeah. Uh, nothing what about, in the box itself. What about on the, the lip of the box, like where the where the parts folded over from the cover? 
Uh, no, on, not on the insert, on the box itself. You know that extra bit of printing where they fold it into the cover to, to adhere it? It's on the inside. Yeah, I'm just looking at all the different things. On the outside and inside, nothing on the bottom part of it. Okay. Let's take a look on the inside of it. There's some artwork. It looks like it folds over. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's basically just a waterfall, but there is no text on it whatsoever. Interesting. But what's kind of neat about it is it kind of looks like one of Keith Matechka's uh, earlier games, Bullfrog. Oh, yeah, a little bit. But, yeah, there's no text or anything on the insert of this that I've seen so far. I may be wrong. Yeah, maybe, maybe there's... Or maybe he referenced a game that... That was different. I don't know. Maybe lockup is what he's talking about, but yeah, I'm not seeing anything on role player. I was like, oh, that's cool. Let me check this out. But nope. Yeah. Um, he also said a hidden meme on Imperial Settlers insert. Uh, which... we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that a little later. Okay, sounds good. Um, Scott said every component of this game, and he put the game Hit Z Road. Kristen said, other board games hidden uh, I Castles of Mad Queen. Uh, I think she's trying to say I E Castles of Mad King Ludwig. Um, yeah. He, uh, if I remember correctly, I haven't played the game myself, but there's like a board game room or something like that in it. Yeah. Yeah, there totally is. And there's a lot of a lot of extra references inside of the Castles of Mad King Ludwig, like on tables. and. So I, I didn't put this specifically on my list, but Stonemaier Games left a little Easter egg of one of the games that they were working on. They already had a working title for it. In between two castles of Mad, Ling, Mad King Ludwig. One I... of those rooms was called the Tapestry Room. Oh, interesting. See, yeah. I thought... I could have sworn that he's done that for every game, hasn't he? But there was What's something that? to that... Uh, there was something I heard where every game references the next one in line. In, in a sense, or, or ones that are in line, because Wingspan wasn't really referenced just yet. Yeah. But yeah, so games that he's working on has an idea how he's going to do it or name and stuff like that. He kind of works it into like future games. Um, we'll talk. They talked about it. Uh, I think there's one that's coming up talking about how Euphoria talked about viticulture. Gotcha. Okay, that's cool. Uh, Dan says, I love the dragon shadow and sea serpent hiding in the tiles of King Domino. And not just that, there's act the sea serpent one is actually a reference to the Loch Ness Monster. Right, exactly. And in fact, uh, it, it popped into my head when we saw that tile again when we were going through the Bruno Cathala board game breakdown. I'm like, that's a nice little Easter egg. I just didn't want to mention it while we were already going three hours in. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, we already knew that this is what we were going to talk about. Yeah. All right. Uh, Eric says, the boards for Galaxy Defenders have homages to a pile of different sci-fi properties. Never played Galaxy Defenders, so. Uh, Galaxy Defenders, really? Yeah. I didn't realize it was. Let me look at that real quick, because there's only nine tiles for the planets, but I didn't realize that did. And once again, viewers at home listening, sorry. Yeah, well, I mean... They can be looked into, and these are yes, all except for you have like four hundred games. You can't be pulling everything off the shelf. No, I'm not pulling everything off, but I do want to see the planets. Okay, so all right, there's little space dudes. They kind of look similar to droids. I might be wrong on that. Actually, the the droids look like BB-8 from Star Wars. When was this come out? Uh, this came out. Because here you go. I don't remember exactly when it out. Yeah, that does look like BB-8. Um, this was only a few years ago. This is not very old. 2017. Um, yeah, there's Desert Casino, which, I mean, that's obviously a a reference to um, to uh, to what Vegas. No. Is this one here? I don't know. I don't about, know what that tile is. So. What about what about this one? I mean, it's like a three D maze thing. Do you see something in there? Oh, I already can tell you what that's a reference to. What is it? It's a Star Trek reference. 
Oh, is this the board cube? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because the planet is a cube. That makes sense. We have this one. Some uh, bubbles and life forms inside of the I bubbles. I kind of get the reference. I can't remember what the movie's called. Yeah. Um, we have this guy. Uh, not getting the reference on that one, but... <laughs> no, I've never noticed this before, but they're grilling hamburgers on the on the lava. That's great. Oh, that's a reference to Star Wars, though. Is it? Anakin gets burned up on one of those planets. That's the part. Then we have a gem mining factory. Okay. And, and then, uh, we have, like, kind of like Rainbow World. That's, that's it. That's cool. I did not realize that. Have you played? Have you heard of this game before? No. It's like many other Emperor S four games, but this was made by uh, Renegade as well. Okay. So instead that's cool. of kind of AEG. Yeah, instead of AEG. Well, AEG doesn't print Emperor S four. Uh, Deepwater does. They print I swear to God, quit putting them back on the shelf. <laughs> Just move them to the side. That's a good point. All right. Uh, next one. That was Eric who said that one. Uh, Matt says in Godspeed there is a card with an alpaca statue this is a nod to the game's original theme Apocalypse oh Jesus God about post-apocalyptic tribes of alpaca, alpacas I'm not making this up no I'm so glad they changed that theme <laughs> I love that theme Alpocalypse um, alright Dan says in Tainted Grail it has been spotted that assets from other Awakened Realms games are used for some of the minis for example, there is a part of an arm for the character from one of their games, Lord of Hellas, I think, on the Hella Pig. Hell Pig, not Hella. Hell. Hell Pig. Hell. Hell Pig. Sorry. Uh, Peter says adds on to that that there are pop culture pop culture references in the story, but won't spoil it. Yeah. Cool. So uh, we've talked about uh, some of the stuff Julie said, but she said Rampage, Terror Meeple City, the Ninja Turtles climbing out of the manhole. And Castles of Mad King Ludwig, other games pictured in some of the rooms. See, and I'm being nice. I'm not getting my copy of Castles of Mad King Ludwig you off the show. Stay right there. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, what, I'm, yeah, I knew that would be a bear to dig through those tiles. But uh, Ben, he brought up some of the room tiles in Agricola have a game table on them with Bonanza set on it, which is another Uwe Rosenberg card game. And in Well, fact, uh, I don't know if you've referenced, referenced this uh, later on, but... Um... What is it? The, the Caverna has Agricola set up in one of the rooms. Yeah, I, I, I don't have that referenced, but I do have... Uh, you, you'll you see the reference here in a minute. But um, another example of that was uh, some of the cards, like for the planting field, I think in Agricola. Or, I'm sorry, in... Um, in yeah, Agricola. That actually is set up the exact same way as the original tile, or the original Bonanza cards of the fields. So you have, like, the corn seeds growing out of it. So Frank says, I can't believe most people are still unaware of the Star Wars and Lord of the Ring Easter eggs and scythe. Yep. That's a lot of the ones that we're talking about. Um, yep. and then Christian said so, for me... Huh? Well, no, I was going to say, we won't uh, add on to this, but I get where he's going with this. Yeah. For me, it's really easy to... Easy the end reveal after the first case of time stories. Yeah. Which yeah. you and I have both played, but we're not going to... Yeah, yeah, we're not going to know the spoilers, but yeah. No, I, I, I was like, okay, that's kind of interesting. Yep. Uh, Chad says, on the Coloma box board is both a Star Trek, Next Generation, and Back to the Future reference. Which is interesting. I have not played Coloma, but it sounds really cool. Uh, I, I really like this next one. <laughs> uh, I Steven wish I had this game. says, Jean-Luc Picard is having tea and chai. And he actually shows us a picture of it. No kidding. Huh? Move that over just a little bit. There you go. Perfect. No kidding. That He certainly is having chai tea, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then Heather replied to that. Steven, that is amazing. I might have to get this game for that. Or for that. <laughs> I, cool. I have to get this game just for that. Uh, so I'm a huge sci-fi fan. We've talked about this. Sure. Star Trek Next Generation is my favorite Star Trek, just because of John Luke Picard. Yep. Yep. Uh, of course, again, going back to Scythe, Thor, Santa Claus, etc. Mm -hmm. 
All right, Guy again adds on one of the tables and ice cool. There is a game, ice cool. Yep, the game within a game. Yep. Yep. Uh, Victoria says too many bones hidden quest for free promos. So and... apparently, if you find an, some hurt, hidden information in too many bones, you can get promos for it. Huh. That's intriguing. So, Kevin didn't really say anything. He just added a picture. So, let's see. How's that? Uh, it's pretty good. Yeah, the corporate stronghold. From Terraforming Mars, who is produced and published by Stronghold, stronghold Games. Games. Yep. <laughs> uh, Nashalim, sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Uh, Tend to Kill has a funny Easter egg on many tiles. Land Speeder, Ecto-1, Batman Spotlight... Dinosaur, Daily Planet, etc., etc. So to me, this sounds like they're a DC fan with uh, Daily Planet and Batman Spotlight on there. Probably. <laughs> and I wonder if the dinosaur is just the dinosaur in general, or is it the dinosaur from Batman? I don't know. That's a good question. I wonder. Uh, as we were talking about earlier, once again, Scythe here, Eric says, the modular board has even more Easter eggs than the primary board of Scythe. Uh-huh. And Patrick says one of the artifacts in Euphoria is the board game Viticulture. Yep. And Chad was just adding that he did forget about that. Eric was saying on King Domino, on one of them you can see Sam. Um, I believe he's still referencing Sam Healy from Dice Tower? Or Sam from Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah. Fighting Shalab. Oh, it might be Sam from Lord of the Rings fighting Shalab because yeah, he does fight the spider. Yep. Uh, it's a wonderful world. Can You can see references to other board gamers, such as Outlib, Welcome, that sort of stuff. Cool. Those ones I didn't know. Drake says, yeah. Merchant's Cove, especially the solo scenarios in the Secret Stash expansion, are chock full of references and Easter eggs. Uh, Petra adds, 7 of 9 board carrot named Jerry. Jerry Ryan played 7 of 9 in Killer Bunnies in the Journey to Jupiter. And Sebastian said... Plenty of Easter eggs on the tiles from Living Planet, Starship Troopers, Aliens, etc. So, as I was going through this, uh, I do want to make reference to an Easter egg of King Domino that I saw as I was trying to like research and find good Easter eggs to use. Mm -hmm. That I, it needs a shout out, and it has to deal with King Domino. Okay. So, on the field, there's a story being told in the... Uh, the game. I, I had to look this up. I haven't played King Domino enough to see this Easter egg. So... In one of the fields, you see a bunch of sheep around a wizard as the wizard's creating a spell, and they're watching what he's doing. Uh -huh. And then you see him making more of the spell in the next one, and then I think in the third tile, the spell explodes, so you see the sheep running away while the wizard's getting blown up. That's cool. So it's over a series of tiles. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that, That's really uh, cool. I, I saw that online. I haven't looked it up myself like for the actual tiles and stuff like that, but I heard there's a little bit of a story into it, yeah. so I thought that was kind of cool. We might look into that here in a bit. <laughs> we'll see oh okay we'll see um, alright well with that being said thank you to the community as always for telling us those those are really fun um, I love seeing hidden info and hidden things in it um, one of my honorable mentions I'll just jump into that uh, it, and it was less of an honorable mention is when we're re doing the, the Bruno Catala episode of yeah. Board Game Breakdown is that it talked about how there's two characters in it, Bruno Cathala and Ludovic Malblanc, who's the other designer, and one's like the dunce, and I remember hearing yeah, about yeah, yeah. that. I No, I didn't know the game, because those were ones that we hadn't played yet, but if, depending on which designer you play as, it has either a good or a, or a negative effect to you. It was pretty funny. Yeah, um, so one of my first honorable mentions, of course, I've been mentioned a lot, Rampage, so I'm going to go ahead and finish that. Actually, two of my honorable mentions, one of the shout-outs and the honorable mention have already been mentioned, so okay. my last one is actually one of my favorites. And it's because a lot of games, especially uh, games that take place in Europe, there's one special thing they always add on the map. Not big known otherwise outside yes. of gaming. I saw this it too. Is yes. Huh? I saw this too. Ticket to Ride has it. Pandemic has it. Yep. So many others do, yeah. Well, see, I knew that, and the only reason it's why it's on this is because the Essen Spiel. Yep. Essen is in a lot of games because of the Essen Spiel um, convention. Yep. 
Yep. Uh, I, I love that little Easter egg and that nod to how big Essen is. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought that the exact same thing. It's like, why, why is Essen on here? Not till years later getting more into board games did I go, oh, yeah. like, why didn't they pick Berlin? Oh, yeah. that's why. Because of yeah. that massive board game collect, or convention there. So if it has a European map on it in a board game, more likely than not, Essen is going to be on it. Yeah. So uh, my honorable mention, uh, I have two examples of it, but it's uh, cover references to other games. Or, or other things. And so, the first example of this that I have is uh, Gingerbread House. So we have Gingerbread House, which was designed by Phil Walker Harding, and it just so happens that on the Wanted sign is a picture Phil. of Phil Walker oh, Harding. Phil Harding. Yeah. So I, I love that little that little reference right there on the front page. And, and I just happen to know what he looks like now. But I wouldn't yeah, have gotten that otherwise. Yeah, we did the, the board game breakdown of him. Yeah. And had to stare at his face for a while. Exactly. Exactly. And we'll, we'll I'll show you another similarity here in a minute as well. Oh, so you can keep going with your honorable mentions because I'm done. All mine got mentioned during the comments. Great. Then my other one is the cover of La Havre. Also, I love it when they reference stuff on the covers. Not only is the boat named the MS Rosenberg, but look at what he's carrying in his crate. Copies Agricola. of Agricola, yeah. And so, like they were saying earlier about every Rosenberg... I'm sorry, if he's carrying a crate of Agricola, you need like two or three people to carry that crate because there's so much in the... the well, this guy's box. clearly really strong. You can tell by his face. And, you and still I've need two people that. for everything in Agricola. <laughs> right, exactly. No, I've noticed that Lookout Games, uh, the company that publishes a lot of these, as well as the artist Clemen Fra Clemens Franz, he, he did art for a lot of Euro games. He does a lot of those self-referential things. And so um, my other two examples, or my actual ones, don't have that on there. But I wanted to uh, bring that up. Okay. Right. Well, I'm ready to get into the list whenever you are. Yeah, let's do it. So my number three on the list here is something that uh, was mentioned in the comments as well. Something that you actually showed me just recently. And I had the game for a long while. Really? And that's Imperial Settlers. Yes. Uh, the, the memes that are on it that they were talking about uh, is true. Uh, one of the favorite ones is like, you like, I heard something about this. Let me see. If you pull up one of the insert, there's little itty bitty little ninjas on it. And they make a joke once you find them. I don't want to ruin it for you, but just pull up your insert and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, that was a really cool one. And I found out because of the online users after first looking into board, uh, looking into these board game Easter eggs. And I thought that was hilarious. And then when I found out you had it, well, that was a sure. And I had to, I had to, I, I, I think I pretty much forced you to open your box so I can look at the, yeah, the inside of it, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I, I was trading it in, um, not at that time. I mean, it was part of our, our board game swap that we were doing, and I was trading it there. But honestly, it's it's. It's a good game. I played it a couple times. It's just a bear to learn and a bear to teach. Once right. you get going, yeah, it's fine. But it just, I probably end up getting Imperial Settlers Empires of the North just because it's so much simpler. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So my number three we already talked about earlier and I already told you it. It was Jaipur with the Dead Panda. All right. So my number two. And the reason why I left this as my number two because, again, it's a promo that you have to buy outside of the game it's not something that's added to the game you have to buy it right. but i love the way it referenced one of my favorite games is role player it's right above me right here yep and that is keith matechka from thunderworks games made a promo race that ties into his first board game he ever made bullfrogs he made the frog can race as a promo to tie into role player and i thought that was I, I like that. I like that reference to one of his past games and putting it in as a race in this game because you never really see frog yeah. people in RPGs, so that just even makes it so much better for me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I think it's. I think the, that one's a really good reference. Um, my second one, which was tech, kind of in a way referenced in the comments and honorable mentions, but not specifically, and that's Queen Domino. This artist, uh, Cyril Bouquet, 
he comes up with some of the best references hands down and you can even tell that right off the bat if you look at the cover just look at how the sheep are falling off of the island or falling off of the tile into the abyss yeah. and other people are bringing that on so when when we we're looking at references i looked at this box and i remembered exactly that and so i brought out a couple of tiles that i thought were worthy of showing off and and some yeah, of the sorry for our audio listeners. What? Yep. Once again, we'll just I'll describe them as best as I can. But these are some of the tiles that are in Queen Domino specifically. I think, unless they are King Dominoes, I think these are the Queen Domino. So ones. now that you mentioned it, I don't know if the the exploding sheep are in King or Queen Domino. It's one of the dominoes. Yeah. Which we also found out that there's going to be a third domino for kids. Dragon yeah. Domino. Dragon Domino. So right here. In this water tile, we see a little pirate floating along, just kind of hanging out in the middle of the water. Yeah. I, I've liked that one a lot. Um, there's this one, where if you look from the... I don't know if this is a specific reference, but you see someone running from a couple of... Or from a zombie in the cornfield, running away from it. Yeah, it's a little hard to see, but there's somebody in the actual field on the other tile. Yeah. Um this one you have a a fox sticking their tail out of the out of the wheat land then you also have a scarecrow with of course a crow hanging out on it then we have this tile this one is just ridiculous i like it a lot it's a funny little image a man on stilts while the sheep are cutting down cutting down the legs which is just completely ridiculous um, we Those have, aren't even Easter eggs. Those are just nice artwork. Uh, the zombie one, yeah, that one's funny. But oh, the, the sheep... there is an Easter egg in here. I'm getting to it. But like the sheep on oh, the Jesus. on the seesaw. How yep. many titles did you pull out? Um, a few. This is supposed to be our shorter podcast. Yeah, well, that's why I'm hurrying along. Uh, you know, you have sheep playing hopscotch there. On this one, you have sheep hanging out on like the roof. Uh. Yeah, I don't think there's anything special with the boat. Um, so, yes. Here's here's the three tiles that really do make more references. This one, and this is over a series of them. The wizard is enchanting the tree. There's another yeah. one where he's like enchanting birds and whatnot. But this one in the Swampland, you have crazy tentacles coming out of it. <laughs> That's a Star Wars reference. That is. Or Kraken or Lord of the Rings. And if you're... You're probably familiar with this little character hanging out behind this construction wall. Happens to have red and white striped. Oh, where's Waldo? There he is. So you see what I mean? It does get yeah. more into it later on. But that's just some of the tiles in Queen Domino that I happen to find stuff in. Not every tile has, has different things, but most of them do. And again, sorry for our audio viewers <laughs> or listeners because this has turned into a show Queen, and tell, apparently. Queen Domino was my number two. <laughs> So, my number one has been mentioned quite a lot. Um, I specifically made sure not to put just Stonemeyer games. Um, there are a lot of stuff like. But you had to put we, a a Stonemeyer game for sure. Yeah, well, you know, I put Stonemeyer in here because he's a big reference to it. But what I specifically put one is to annoy you, and two, I just like this because no, I, he puts I know his what you're own about. personal cats in a lot of his games, yep. and you you actually hunt for them in his games. But, again, Stonemeyer is just chock full of the rooms with that hint at other games. So he even specifically says he doesn't do it in Wingspan because it just wouldn't work to put these kind of Easter eggs in Wingspan. The way right. Wingspan is, it's all about the birds. So, But if he's got another game coming out, he may put a bird or a Wingspan or something into that game. Also, but me specifically, uh, his cats, trying to find where he puts uh, his cats, Biddy and Walter, in, in the game. Mm -hmm. And so there's a card that we like to make reference that Danny forced me to marry him, Marriage of State, where you basically can mirror someone when they're doing something. Yep. Uh, his cats are in that one. In Between Two Cities up there, uh, his cats are in there. Uh, in Viticulture, I believe his, there's cats in one of the, the cards uh, spaces. So he puts his cats in a lot of the games that he can artistically wise. Uh, and it's it's it, I enjoy it. I find it funny. I find the ref it's in Euphoria, like one of his first games. So yeah, you yeah, put the cats in that one too. I yeah. he also does another long long term uh, mm -hmm. one, and that that's not my number one, but I thought it was worth noting as well. Is he's from St. Louis, right? Yep. 
and so he makes a lot of reference to the the, the arches at St. Louis. Yep. Um, between two cities, the player the player piece is the arches. Yep. Um, the he has arches in Viticulture, but I think it's. It's for something else, but there's a reference to the arch in there. Right. Uh, there's a arch. I'm trying to think. There's an arch in Euphoria. Yeah. The, the St. Louis arch, and then mm -hmm. there's what other game does it? Is it uh, in? Scythe has it on one of the one Scythe of the has tiles, it. or one of the spots. Uh, I think between two castles, a Mad King Ludwig has it as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah I, I understand. I'm not a fan of St. Louis because I'm a Cubs fan, but that's a whole other story. Yeah. But I have been to St. Louis quite a few times. Uh, I have actually been up on the St. Louis Arch, so it's neat to see that landmark in more games. Oh, that's cool. I've never been there. That That's one of the places I need to go one of these days. Um, um, if you do, um, if you like zoos, they have a zoo in St. Louis that's free for the public. Oh, okay. And it's so big. All right. What? And so to answer Ithri's question, uh, he says, coming up in a, in a bit late. By the way, hi, Ithri. Thanks for joining us. Um, what By the constitutes way, congratulations an Easter egg on Bullet. This? Yep. Uh, what constitutes an Easter egg for this discussion? Uh, a hidden reference either to something else or something that's not immediately built into the uh, the mechanism or like it's a character that's obviously like Rado the Great. You know, we know who that is. Um, so we're talking about mainly more hidden stuff and the, yeah. where people who 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 really get into the game will notice the references. Yeah, um, and it could be pop culture references just hidden somewhere on the board. Uh, we talked about Rampage where mm -hmm. the bat signal is on one of the rooftops or Captain America Schultz oh. is kind of lying around. And another or, one in Rampage, sorry not to interrupt, but uh, yeah. one of the room tiles, they're playing Cash and Guns, which is another one yeah. from the same company. Uh, and one of my personal favorites that I talked about, we, we try to avoid like the promos that are specially made. But for me, I like the fact that um, Thunderworks Games created the Frogkin as a reference to Keith Matechka's first game, Bullfrogs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so like, like, like a that. little nod and stuff to everything. Yeah. Alright, and my final one on this one is, uh, and I'm going to preface it with a, li a little tiny story. I like... We we talked about this in previous uh, in previous podcasts on how um, CGE their games have some of the funniest rule books and <laughs> and funniest mechanisms. Now this isn't what what you're thinking of at first because at first the the very first one I thought of was um, uh, Dungeon Pets when you when you uh, send your pets off to pasture. And there just so happens to be meat that appears in the market more, and that's a little nod. I thought that was funny, but I did. I had trouble saying that that was an Easter egg because yeah. it was it was built into the mechanism, even though that's kind of how that works. Just um, don't ask where it comes from. Yeah, you still don't know where it comes from, and it says that in the rule book. You don't know. I mean, it's just it's coincidence. And I've noticed that a lot of their CGE games, I have fairly few of them. But a lot of them have like little tiny references to it. But my all-time favorite of that is from a new game that they came out with called Letter Jam. And that is this cover. There's not many much art in the game, but there is absolutely a hidden Easter egg on this cover. I don't know if I've shown you this yet, Daniel. Have I? Yep. Well, that's why I'm being quiet over here. Yep. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You figure it out. <laughs> Go stare at the cover of this game from CGE Letter Jam, and see if you can figure out what the what the Easter egg if, is. If you have it. If you have it. If not, go look for the cover online in one of the pictures. Yep, yep. Just be careful for them not to spoil it. But yes, there is absolutely a, an Easter egg on this. So with that being said, that's my number one hidden Easter egg. Nice. Well done. Thank you. I appreciate that. And we hope you guys have enjoyed uh, A3. If you if you hear this or you're able to, let us know any Easter eggs that you happen to know of in any game. Or if you want to say some of the Easter eggs that may or may not be in games that you've helped with before, let us know. Um, yeah. As well. So we're going to hang out for just a few minutes. Let's talk about this next few weeks that we're going to be filming. Uh, coming up on Friday, we are going to have the top eight debate for Vincent Dutrait. Games. Art in games. Art. Specifically we, one that we, he's we, done we, art for. Yeah, we had to actually make that reference because we found out that he's a game designer. 
Yep, it has one game to his name, but he does have a game. Um, so do we want to go over the top eight and, and specify yep. which ones? Okay, so number one is Jaipur, which I did double check. It is the Space Cowboys version of it. Oh, that makes sense, because that's a very beautiful version. Yeah, yeah, it's gorgeous. Doesn't have a dead panda, but it's still pretty good. Yeah, so going up against the number eight seed, Dead Man Draw. Dead Man's Draw, which is also like a special version of the game. Yeah, but uh, it's artwork. But it's artwork still, yeah. Um, number two is Lewis and Clark. Uh, facing the seven seed, Rise of Augustus. Our number three seed, Lost Cities. Facing the six seed, Discoveries of Lewis and Clark. And before we keep going... Um, it three adds, I'm trying to think of any, Millennium Blades has a ton of little things and a lot of arts that you have to look close to see, text and stuff. Also, I think you, I see what you're saying about Letter Jam's cover. <laughs> yep, you probably do. Um, the, and then we have number four seed, Pathfinder the Adventure Card Game. Versus the five seed, Broom Service. Broom Service, Um, yeah. and going to, back to Discoveries, Lewis and Clark, uh, a lot of times we pick out games that we think are similar to other games, a la Agricola or Caverna, whichever right. one's higher, we take out the lower one out because they're pretty much the same, just a different setting. However, with this one, we both agree that Discoveries, Lewis, and Clark plays completely and utterly different than Lewis and Clark um, yeah. game. Yeah, there's a there's a few, uh, there's a few um, similarities, but really it's a different game. One's a dice yeah. game, one's a resource management game. Yep. Very, very different. And then, coming up this next Monday, we have Keith... Uh, Matechka, Matechka. I want to We're going to double check on how to pronounce Keith's name. But he's from Thunderworks. He's a game designer as well. Uh, he just came out with a new Kickstarter. Uh, Role Player Adventures, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, which I'm part of. Yeah, which you're part of. So we're going to talk to him about that, as well as we're going to break down everything that Thunderworks has done. And next week, we already do have our Chits and Giggles... Uh, episode lined up and that is going to be kind of like a duo episode we yeah. are going to be talking about the best and the worst worst uh board game inserts so we want to get your input I, I i like doing best list the best of this the best of that i'm having more fun trying to figure out worst inserts because i want to rip them apart yeah no more i always the one i i i see what you're saying yeah they're there are some inserts, I, and I've thrown away quite a few inserts as well, but there's oh, some hi. that are just so good that you can't help but... Actually, I already know what my third best is now. So, I just let's, looked let's over. Let's just put it this way. I have all my best. I know what are good inserts, and I have them as my best, but I'm going through like everything I've seen for the worst just where I can be like, yeah, I want to nitpick this, and yes, I want to nitpick this, and yes, I want to yep. get rid of this, to the point where... One of mine is an entire company. <laughs> Which is pretty bad. Um, yes. Yeah, I I have... I think you're going to be very surprised by my number one. I can't wait to tell you about it next week. Also, when we're, I'm coming with uh, inserts here for me personally. I'm trying to avoid, like, Kickstarter stuff. Um, like, some that will have, like, these Kickstarter inserts in there to make it easier for other people. If it's in the base game, it stays because of Kickstarter. If it's not in the base game and only Kickstarter exclusive for this kind of stuff, that's when I, I take it out for or, myself. Or you're saying something like an add-on, like a broken token, or... Or not just like an add-on, like, a uh, case in point for me, um, uh, Reavers of Midgard right over here. Uh-huh. Uh, it has game trays in there, uh, and that was, if you've reached a certain point, they would put these in there for everything. It wasn't right. just a Kickstarter exclusive. I'll keep those kind of inserts in my, sure. my list here. If it's just something like, oh, because it's Kickstarter exclusive and you're getting the Kickstarter exclusive game, you get this insert no. while everybody else is getting this cardboard insert instead of this plastic insert that you get because you helped us print this. Right, exactly. And that, that was more so for the earlier Kickstarter games than it is now. A lot of times when they reach a certain point, they're like, okay, we can add this and it's going to be in every game. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't disagree <laughs> with that. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, cool. Uh, but that's how um, I'm going to go about it. I need to start working on some of my more worst. And it's not just because I don't have games. I do have games. It's just trying to figure out what the top three are. Yeah. The best ones, I'm like, this one works, this one works, this one works. We have plenty right, that are bad. Let's find out what the worst of the worst is now. Right. Exactly. No, there's some that's like, like, man, it would be great if you just made this change. 
I have a you short know, list we're getting into through. the list already. <laughs> yeah, but my thing is here for this next topic. I had this one finished. I just got to find out which ones I need to plug in yeah. before I even finish the one we were talking about today. Yeah, actually, you know what? Um, yeah, I already know. I, I know my, I just remembered one right now, and I already know my top three of both. So I know my top three best, and I know uh, my two honorable mentions for best. I need one more honorable mention for worst, and two more honorable mentions for worst. And I have like a total of, let me see here, where's that paper at? I got about eight games on that list. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just fi- figuring out what gets plugged in where. And you know also, what? None of none of mine, including honorable mentions, are from the same company of anything. None of mine. So, uh, just to go to be nice here, and because I'm naming one company as the worst, and it's going to be my number three, and my number three for best is also going to be a company, okay. but it's because I can't. I can't short this company out. They they do a phenomenal job, so they're they're going Ooh. into my best, um, but. I just want to make reference because I just thought of it and it was going to be my shout out and I forgot to write it down. Yeah. Uh, going back to our Easter egg topic, um, I have to give a shout out to Prospero Hall. What they do, and it's not even Easter eggs per se, but the references that they do in the game just to give it that little twist. Horrified has that warning that they would play. Like if you watch the Frankenstein movie, which was the first of the Universal Monster movie. There's a guy that comes out and says, hey, this is going to be terrifying, going to be scary, be careful, and yada, yada. Yeah. They have that warning in the very yep. front cover. Uh, they also have, um, what is it? In Adam and Costello oh, as yeah. one of the characters in the game. Yep. Uh, Back to the Future has the flux capacitor. Uh, the Shining, the rule book is all work and no play makes uh, Jack a dull boy on it. And then yep. the board itself, it has the, the beautiful scenic, and then when you open it, it's all the snow. Yeah, so, piling it so, in dark at night. Yeah, those little subtle references that they do, just just to give it more flavor to the game, is something I really enjoy. That's cool. All right, so then uh, next week, tune in for our Top 8 Debate, which if you're on Twitch right now with us... Uh, Friday, not next week, Friday. <laughs> next week, Friday. This week, Friday. No, uh, well, we haven't talked about next, next Friday's... Oh yeah, well that's we won't even know that till next week anyway, because we <laughs> yeah, already know what our chits and giggles episode is going to be for next yeah, week. Yeah, chits. Uh, so yeah, we're li- lined up all the way until the next week's uh, top eight top debate. Eight debate. Um, cool. This week, of course, the top eight debate is the top eight that's in Dutre. Mm-hmm. Uh, Monday board game breakdown with Keith Macheka of Thunderworks Games, and next Wednesday, chits and giggles topic: best and worst inserts. Yeah, cool. So definitely tune in for those if you ever want to watch us. Uh, do this live and join in on the conversation like our friend Especially Isri does. Especially when someone makes it show and tell. Yeah, yeah. watch us at twitch.tv slash everydayboardgames. You can also watch the re-upload of these videos, uh, usually about one to two weeks time on Everyday Board Games 2020. Everyday, one word, board, one word, games, one word, 2020 uh, as well by itself. Just make sure you put the spaces out there. Um, you can find them up on YouTube as well as the audio versions of this podcast at Everyday Board Games Podcast on Podbean. And also, if you want to contact us, contact us at everydayboardgames2020 at gmail.com. And with that, I've been Daniel. And Daniel. And thank you very much for tuning in. And have a good one.